Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Montreal Canadiens franchise series here on the channel. Year 8 has wrapped up, and we finished with a 48, 23, and 11 record. That's uh, That equals to first overall, or not first overall, but first in our division. And uh, we're going to be facing against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Another matchup against the Lightning. It's not the first one in this uh, franchise mode. And uh, I showed you the lines, but I know it's been a while since uh, that video released, so I want to quickly sh go over the lines again and show you them, uh, just for those who have forgotten. So we have Alexander Volkov here, 28 years old, Rickard Raquel, and Nikita Kucherov. They've added Tarasenko. They don't have Stamkos anymore, but they do have Tarasenko now. Braden Point is still here, 86. Andre Palat, Boris Kachuk. Mikhail Granlin, who is, I think, obviously better than 79, even though he's 34. And then Jerry Potter, a creative player. Let's see when he was drafted 29th overall. Mikhail Bakker, Matteo Reinhardt, and Thomas Hickey. Uh, the defenseman is playing on the fourth line there. Uh, M Michael Vujovic, Truba, Liam Franzen, Sergachev, Schuster, and Manson round up the decor and then Vasilevsky's a net it says he's at around 87 but I think he might be a little bit better so even though this team is one of the wildcard teams I know they're very good uh, just looking at their record uh, doesn't translate how good of a team they are they're 46 30 and 6 that's not even a bad record in my opinion that's only two less uh, regulation wins than us so just taking a look at our lines really quickly before we start the playoff series here. We've reunited Juran Sagan with Nicholas Sontag on the right hand, right hand side there. Hopefully, he can produce in the playoffs this season. Laxanen, Kokaniemi, and Jonathan Campoli, who's gone up to an 85. Uh, Wallstrom, Galchenyuk, O'Brien, Shrimp, Karostin, and Glebov. And then for the defense, uh, Ortio Bockwist, Smith, Honka, Eklund, and Kali Yakovo. So that's uh, what our team is looking like. And then for the goalies, let me quickly show you that as well. Why not? Carey Price has actually gone down to an 85, guys. So that's it's a little bit worrying. But, um, I mean, there's nothing we can do here. Uh, we want to, hopefully it's his last season. And hopefully he can go out in the bang. Uh, with a bang, I should say. And uh, he can win a Stanley Cup there in his last season as a Montreal Canadian. And one more thing that I want to do, guys, like I promised in the last episode, I will shout you guys out and read your comments. So Nick Almeida uh, is the first comment that I see here in the video. He said, play Wallstrom with Kakaniemi. Kakaniemi is a pure playmaker who doesn't take many shots. And Wallstrom is a pure sniper who takes north of 250 shots. They should make a good duo. So actually, I completely agree with that, uh, Nick. Let's see uh, the comparison between... Jonathan Campoli and uh, Wallstrom. So let's see how many shots he took. He only took 212. So I think that's a good idea to maybe put Wallstrom here and then Campoli with Galchenyuk and O'Brien. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to give this uh, this comment uh, a go here. I'll agree with that. S. Baldrick is not happy with Sontag. He says, Sontag is right sh Oh, right shot. Sorry, I think he meant right shit. <laughs> he's a right sh yeah I guess he shoots from the right yeah he does uh, he's a one time player play him as a left wing we did try that but we'll try this again just to see uh, I agree though he is he's a shooter and he's a one he want it's better for him to play on his offside so maybe he has more shots uh, so we have moved him to the left wing see how that works maybe if we put yeah Wallstrom shoots the right too so yeah we'll keep him here uh, and then Laxon and shoots left. So, okay, that's fine. And then, so we've listened to S. Baldrick's comment here. Uh, he says, uh, the Dino Dan fan says, hey man, your videos are cool, uh, but can you make a little bit, a little bit of a cut in the video? They can be shorter. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'll definitely try to make the videos a little shorter now. Uh, Dino fan, Dino Dan fan, um, yeah, I know, I know some people like, what's it called, uh, some people do like longer videos, but um, yeah, like I said, some people 
obviously want them shorter. So I'll try my best to do that. This one shouldn't be too long since it's just a playoff series. Next, as Baldrick says, less talent in the bottom six. Playmaker, sniper in my bottom six. I have three, four, five two-way forwards. So, I mean, I think, yeah, we don't have any too many two-way forwards. I think we just have like a good offensive team uh, here in uh, Montreal. Maybe that would be something to look for. Maybe to trade in the offseason. Maybe trade. Some of these guys, cause yeah, cause yeah, you're right. All of our team, except or all, of, all of our offense score, except for Kakanimi, are playmakers or snipers. I think Duran is also a playmaker. So yeah, you're right. You're right, as Baldrick. I think maybe moving some of these assets to uh, acquire some two-way forwards or grinders for the third and fourth line would be better. But uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll go with this lineup that we have right now and see what happens in the future. We do have a couple two-way defenders, at least, and defensive defensemen, I think. Yeah, Eichland has to be a defensive defenseman, and then Ortu is a two-way D-man as well. So we have three, three two-way D-men or defensive D-men, and then we have f a three offensive defensemen as well. So I think our team is balanced pretty good, I think, in my opinion. The one thing that I'm worried about is, uh, like I said, the goalie. But yeah, we will put Sontag on his offside here and then Wallstrom on his offside as well. See what happens here. Hopefully Campoli can uh, win some face-offs. What is Owen Schrems face-offs? 60, okay. And so Campoli has the best face-offs on the team. Or at least on this second, uh, second uh, wave of power play here. So I think I like the way our team is looking. I think we have some... Uh, we have a, the potential to essentially get going here, guys. Um, at least our offense score has the potential to explode here in the first round. So let's just get into it, guys. We've moved Wallstrom to the second line as well as moved Sontag to his offside. So let's just get into simulating here the first period, guys. So let's go. Let's go to goals first period. 2-1, to one, Wallstrom scores, so good thing I listened to, um, I think it was uh, Sontag, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Bal S. Baldrick, it was Nick Almeida who told me to move uh, Wallstrom to the second line, and then Laxton scored as well, Kucherov scored on Price, so our second line has actually scored two goals, which is good, 12-6 to six the shots, let's simulate the second, no goals, 21-11 to 11 the shots, we're I think it looks like we're dominating the play so far. We give them a power play. Hopefully, we can kill it off. Come on, Price. 13 minutes to go. 26 to 18 the shots. And Owen Schrem scores on Vasilevsky to give us that two-goal lead. That really important two-goal lead here. 32 to 21 the shots. Let's just hold on here. Two minutes to go. And it looks like we will. 3 to 1. Price has a big game. 25 safe performance in game one. Let's see the three stars here. Carey Price with the first star, Laxanen with the second, two points, and then Oliver Wallstrom with a goal. I think it might have been the game-winning goal gets the third star. So Laxanen is producing once again. We get take a one to nothing lead in the first round against the Lightning. Hopefully we can win another game here at the Bell Center. We'll get right into simulating, guys. Noth none of this wasting time. Let's just get to simulating and get the W here. First period. Two to nothing. We don't start well. Tarasenko and Sergachev score. The one thing that I'm worried about these guys is that they do have offensive power with Kucherov and Tarasenko, and they do have some good demon as well. Like Sergachev is a good player. 14 to seven the shots. Can we have a bounce back second? Let's go. Three to one. Sontag scores. Tarasenko does score on Price, the third goal of the game. We're getting completely dominating. 26 to 13 the shots. Come on, we'll do the eight time simulating here. 15 minutes to go. Come on, boys. We need to go before the 10, mar 10 minute par mark here. We don't. 5 on 4 power play. Tyler Sagan steps up. A goal on Vasilevsky. Five minutes to go. Sagan scores again. What a stud. 3 to 3. What a comeback. Kucherov scores on price, though, and that's going to be hard to come back from. And it's not happening like I thought. 31-30 to 30 the shots. It ended up being a much closer game. Tyler Sagan stepped up, but it wasn't enough. Carey Price allowed that important third or fourth goal in the third. 
Tyler Sagan has the first star, two goals, one assist. Kucherov with one goal, two assists, gets the second. And Sontag with two points gets the third. So our first line stepped up here uh, immensely in the second game, but we just didn't get the W. I'm going to need a better performance from Price. Uh, in the third game here in Tampa Bay, we've lost one game at home, but we can bounce back here. We've had a good record on the road. I was looking at our record there and uh, earlier, and I think I know we have a good record. Come on, guys. Let's start well here in the first period of game three. Two to nothing. We do exactly that. Jesperi Kakaniemi and Sontag score. Our first two lines get a goal here. 14 to nine, the shots for the Habs. Let's get into simulating the second period. 5-0. Galchenyuk and Sagan scores again. That's four goals in the last two games for Sagan. 26-19 the shots. This is exactly what I wanted. This is the exact response that I was looking for from the boys here in game 3. 30-23 to 23 the shots. It's also really encouraging because Price is having a, a very good game here. It's looking good so far, so... I think it's going to end up in a good performance by every player on the Montreal Canadiens roster here. 5 to nothing shutout win. Let's see the three stars. Sagan with another three points. 27 save shutout for Carey Price. And then a two-point performance by Nicholas Sontag. So that's incredible. 5 to nothing win. Sagan has seven points in three games after starting pretty slowly in the, in the first game there. He's exploded in the last two. If we can win this game in Tampa Bay, game four, we can take a very, very advantageous lead here in the series. So come on, boys. Let's get into simulating the first. Come on. Two to nothing. So it's been the two to nothing first period lead series so far. This is the fourth game in a row that a team gets a two to nothing lead. Last game it was us, but then this game it's them. Raquel and Boris Kachuk score for them. 11 to 11 the shots. Come on, guys. Let's have a, bet, a way better second. Come on here. Second. 2 to 1. Caleb O'Brien scored on Vasilevsky. 23 to 21 the shots for them. Come on, boys. Let's do this. Uh, simulating. Come on. Palat scores. 27 and 22 the shots. We have an answer back the way I wanted us to. And we allow a third period goal. Come on, we have a power play here. Can we come back? We don't. Tarasenko, Tarasenko scores on Price. Not the performance I wanted from our team, especially after dominating the last game. But it was expected that the Tampa Bay Lightning was going to have a bounce back game. And they definitely did that. Vasilevsky was with a really good effort there. Palat and Raquel score as well. And they get the second and th third star there. Uh, it just looks like our, our team didn't, our first two lines didn't step up here in game four. But we have an extremely important game here in game five. It's a pivotal game. It's the best out of three now, guys. So we need to step up here. Let's just get right into simulating. I don't want to make any line changes. I think our team has performed fairly well so far. So let's just go to the goals and simulate the first period. 4-2, holy crap. So Eklund scores, Raquel gets the 1-1 one, one goal. Laxanen scores the 2-1. Wallstrom scores, N Nicholas Sontag score, and then Braden Point scores on Price. So 11-9 to nine the shots. The goalies haven't been incredible, but that's okay. Hopefully we can keep going and get some more goals here in the second. And that's exactly the opposite that happened in the second period. No goals, 22-16 to 16 the shots now for Tampa Bay. Come on, can we hold on? Kill this power play. We don't do that. Andre Palat scores. Come on, we get a power play. Can we score here? We don't. 14 minutes to go. 27 to 22 the shots. Come on, another power play. Can we get a goal here? We don't. 4 to 3 still. Come on, guys. Hold on. Hold on to this precious lead, guys. One minute to go, and we will hold on. 4 to 3 win. Much uh, closer game than initially thought. It was 4-1 at one point, but it ended up being 4-3. We get the W. Let's see the first three stars. Nicholas Sontag score, er, gets the first star. For some reason, he had one goal. Jesperi Kakanyemi had two assists, and then Aaron Dell was in net 
I guess he came in as the backup, or he came in relief for uh, Vasilevsky and didn't allow any goals, so he got the third star, which is kind of funny, but yeah, that's good. Uh, now, we have the chance to eliminate the Tampa Bay Lightning here at home, well, in at, away for us in their home ice uh, arena there at the Millie Arena in Tampa Bay. We need our first two lines to step up. Keep stepping up, or maybe someone on the decor. Balquist, I'm looking at you. Ty Smith, one of our offensive defensemen. I would like for them to step up here. Let's have another lead here. Whenever we've had leads go after the first period, I think we've won all the games. So come on, guys. First period, 1-1. Karostin scores, and Schuster scores on Price. 12-5 to the shots, though. So we're kind of struggling to get some shots on net here. We need a bigger second, guys. Come on. A way better second. Let's go second period. 1-1 one, one still. 20-14 to 14 the shots. We're going to go right into simulating here. Come on, guys. Let's get a power play. Let's draw a call here and get a goal here on the power play. Doesn't look like that's happening. Okay, it does exactly. Can we get a goal here? We don't. We give them a power play. Kill it off. And Vladimir Tarasenko, that... Oh, my God. That piece of crap scores. 29-25 to 25 the shots. We get a power play. Can we score? And we're going to get the 2-1 to one loss here. 29-28, to 28, the shots. Our offense shriveled up here. They didn't step up. You guys see the three stars here. But our offense definitely didn't show up here in game six. The most important game of our season. But now we move to game seven. This is absolutely the most important game of our season. I want to quickly see how our lines are doing. Maybe we need something something to do something different for the specialty teams maybe if i do this potentially i wonder if this would do anything our power play hasn't been performing in my opinion so sontag has five points in six games sagan has nine points dry has five assists only L laxon is not playing as good as i want him to so i wonder if i do what can i do here Gampoli has nothing all right, the third line is actually not producing either. So I'm thinking maybe moving Gleb off here. Oh, and Tramp has a goal. Karostin has a goal. Galchenyuk is not producing. What I'm worried, though, is Laxon. So I'm wondering if I should do Laxon on the first line, draw on the second. I wonder if this would do anything. Hopefully Laxon can wake up and get our first line going like it was going in the first two or three games here of the series. So I've made, a, I've made a couple minor line changes. If it doesn't work out, hopefully your coach can uh, adjust in-game. But this is the most important game of our season, guys. All right, guys. First period here. 2-1. to one, Ty Smith steps up. I called the defenseman out. And I called, the, called out the first line as well. And say again, score Max or Maxime Reinhardt or whatever his name is. Uh, scores for them. We get a 2-1 to one lead. Like I said in the last game, whoever gets the lead after the first period has won, I think, all the games so far. So this is a good sign for sure. We have a big second period coming up here. Let's go second period. 5-1, Eklund, Sagan, and Laxanen. So it looks like our first line is stepping up. 23-22, to 22, the shots. Good stuff here. Come on, second period. Yeah, that was the second, third period now. Let's do the in-game simulation. It looks like we have it in the bag, but I don't want to get too cocky either. They do have some good players like Tarasenko, Raquel, Kucherov. We do give them two power plays there, but we kill one of them off. Sontag scores to give us another four-goal lead here. Incredible. 6-2 performance so far. 30-21 to the shots. To 29 the shots, I should say. And then four seconds to go. And we're going to get the W. We're going to go to the second round, guys. Great stuff here. Let's see. Laxanen with four points when we moved them up to the first line. One goal, three assists. Sagan, another three points. Two goals, one assist. And then Carey Price had a big game, 31 save performance here. So it's looking good. Cameron Hillis has been injured. We'll just go in an assistant line. Assistant coach replaces the player. Let's take a look at the player stats really quickly, though, guys, for the playoffs. Sagan has stepped up finally again after having a really disappointing season or season and then postseason last year. He stepped up. Look at his shooting percentage. 19.4. That's 
That's insane. Six goals in seven games, 12 points in the seven game series there. Sontag, seven points in seven games. Laxanen as well. He was actually under a point per game. And after we moved him up to the first line, he he moved up to a uh, point per game there. Kalkaniemi, seven points, one goal, six assists. It looks like uh, playing with Wallstrom, I think, has helped out a little bit. Bobquist, seven points. Jonathan Dryan, six assists. Caleb O'Brien, three points. Kalyakovo, three as well. Eklund, two. Wallstrom, only two goals. I don't know what's going on with him. 22 shots. Is this the most? That's the second most after Sagan. So I would like for him to get going a little bit more. Ty Smith, one goal, one assist. Ken Galchenyuk, Orteo Karost, and Shrimp. Let's take a look at our rookies, though. Campoli was a non-factor, unfortunately. Four penalty minutes. Uh, that was it. Uh, who else? Glebov was pretty non-existent. Owen Shrimp had a goal. Uh, eight penalty minutes. Eight penalty minutes, I should say, sorry. And then Ortio is pretty non-existent. But yeah, the two rookies there didn't do as much as well as I wanted them to, but that's okay. I think Caleb O'Brien is also a rookie. Oh, no, he's a second-year player. But yeah, he was decent as well, 86 overall. Uh, right winger there. And then let's take a look at Price's stats just to end off the, off the video here. Four wins, three losses, one shutout, 2.29 goals against average. Uh, 926 save percentage so it's actually pretty good stats for him he usually performs the 38 year old goaltender there he usually performs in the playoffs let me show you the playoff stats I mean he's under the way he's been usually he's usually been insane in the playoffs but what's it called here uh, yeah th this is the times the two times we won the Stanley Cup he's 1.91 and then 1.85 so he's been a stud. He's a 2.29. It's still pretty good in my opinion. So that's that for the playoff stats. Let's see our AHL team. I didn't really pay mine too much attention to them. So let's see where they're at. I think they might be out of the playoffs, unfortunately. Let's take a quick look here, guys. Oh, never mind. They actually swept the first round. So that's good. They're 3-0, which is incredible. Let's go and see who our next opponent will be in the playoffs. So let's see here. It's going to be the Detroit Red Wings. All right. So the Red Wings will be the next team that we face off against. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to do actually was to look at the uh, player stats for the AHL. I did not do that. So let's go here. HL Cam Hillis was actually he just got injured. He was the leading scorer. Will Benton, Bush Karev, top nine. Holmgrim, he's an 83, so he's definitely gonna make the NHL next year. Offensive defenseman, two points. Stevenson, who is this? Low elite 79, fourth line forward, 20 years old. What is he? Grinder, okay. It's pretty good. Austin. Olafson Suzuki didn't perform. Zabatel. Has been a non-factor right now, unfortunately. Who's who's the other guy here? Katori is an 81. Who are the other guys? Let's see here. Uh, Smolinski was another guy, 81. But who, Brun. Okay, so Brun's an 82 as well, but he didn't do anything. So hopefully for the next round for the HL guys, they can get going here. Gleason is an 80. I think he was an 80 in the past episode as well. Backup goalie, that's his role franchise three wins one shutout look at his goals against average save percentage is looking like that i'm wondering if i should go with the gleason for all of tandem in the next year but that's still in the future guys we're still here having to play for the stanley cup in the 20 in the eight eighth year i think or seventh year i don't know what year it is exactly but it's the year 2026 so it's uh, still a long ways away here to win the Stanley Cup. We're only in the second round. And let's take a look here quickly at the Detroit Red Wings lines. Really quickly here. I know I said it was going to be a shorter episode. Uh, that's what uh, the one guy said. But uh, I'm sorry about that, man. Uh, it went up to seven games. And yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Barshi, Larkin, and Zadina is the first three lines Bjorkstrand Backstrom and Habs 
Hapsheed. That's so funny. Harold Hapsheed. Okay. Evander Kane, Rasmussen, and Cambites. Joensu, Oli Joensu, Brian Rust, and Joe Valeno is the top, or is the offensive core, the bottom six. Bowen Byram, Clefbaum, Larson, Nudevara, Chalowski, and Vatnan. So I think we might have, did we trade Clefbaum to this team? I don't think we did. I think, I don't even know. But they maybe traded Clefbaum back. I don't know. And let's see the goalie here. Uh, Kelly Hayes or Robin Leonard. So they do have a very good team. So this is going to be a tough, tough series here, in my opinion, against the Detroit Red Wings. But uh, we do have a chance. We have a lot of good players as well. I think their team kind of looks similar to us. They have a lot of uh, offensive players, a lot of offensive defensemen there. And uh, I think our goalie is better, though. Hopefully, Carey Price has the experience and he can uh, hold on to uh, get the W here uh, for us. End it off here, guys. Uh, leave some suggestions if you guys uh, have anything uh, in mind. Leave it in the comments, guys, for your suggestions. I'm still getting a little bit over cold here, so uh, that's why my voice is like this and I have a little bit of a runny nose. But, uh, yeah, I'm just battling through it right now, guys. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Leave a, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Take it easy.